A very welcome to 12th of April's Gauri Blessing. Now, what does it mean to be a celibate or a Brahmin? The world has many people in different religions who are following celibacy. Fathers are following celibacy. Even uh, Brahmin priests are following celibacy. You have even nuns who are following celibacy. Even Buddhist monks are following celibacy. Well, is there any benefit in that? Or are they running away from life? Well, to speak about it, there's a lot of peace of mind. First, second is you increase your age. That means your body's reproduction or recuperation or recouping power is increased. And that has got something to do with telomeres, which are there in the DNA. It's a very scientific topic, which can be taken about later. But we're talking about celibacy, which is going to give you peace of mind and a lot of happiness. So let's dive into this beautiful blessing. God says, may you be celibate and experience super sensuous happiness by having the special inculcation of purity. God says, the special inculcation of Brahmin life is purity. If there is no purity, then you are not a Brahmin. Now, purity is not just celibacy. Purity is also about thoughts. The level of purity in your thoughts. If you have got greed or jealousy or hatred or revenge, then you are not a Brahmin, even if you are celibate. Yes, that's the catch. God says, for this is the main basis of constant super sensuous happiness. So you will be a celibate, but if you are thinking ill thoughts about others, then are you really a celibate? Are you really pure? No. Are you going to be happy? No. And sweet silence. Basis of constant super sensuous happiness and sweet silence. Purity is not just celibacy, but to be celibate and to be constantly brahmachari. Bracket. One who follows in the footsteps of Brahma. That means the way the seed was planted into Brahma's intellect is what is planted into our intellect also and we are working upon it. The seed of purity. That is, to be one who places his footsteps in the following Father Brahma's activities. His thoughts, words and actions would be in the footsteps of Brahma, the first creation of God, also known as Adam by the way. The faces and activities of those who are brahmacharis, that means the faces and activities, actions of those who are brahmacharis, in this way are always introverted. That means when anything happens, any situation comes over, they'll go inwardly as compared to people who will be blurting out, getting angry, point, pinpointing fingers in all directions. That is not what a brahmachari does. And give the experience of super sensuous happiness. They'll go inwards and have a full stop in their thoughts. And then through that activity, through their pure, powerful thinking, they'll be able to give super sensuous happiness to others also. As compared to somebody who doesn't have pure thoughts, who doesn't have the power to tolerate and face situations, will be throwing hands around, will be getting irritated, agitated, blaming, pinpointing, finger, and... Uh, not giving any happiness, especially super sensuous happiness to anybody. See, sensuous happiness is you give a gift, you give something to eat, you give uh, different things for a person to be physically happy and that is sensuous happiness. Super sensuous means something which is beyond the five senses, that means your five senses can't see that happiness, it's your sixth sense that is you, the soul who feels happiness. To learn more about this super sensuous happiness, you're most welcome to attend a seven-day session at Brahma Kumaris. Nearby you, Om Shanti with Bliss.